I'm going to introduce to you today the Prisma 2020 R package for producing flow diagrams that have the uh, possibility to be interactive. So why are flow diagrams important for evidence syntheses? Well, they often deal with very complex uh, sets of data, lots of methodological stages, many different numbers from different places, and lots of different records, um, sometimes tens or, of thousands or more. And it's important to be able to keep track of all of those records. Flow, flow diagrams do that very nicely. In the case of Prisma, this is the uh, Prisma 2020 um, preprint version of the flow diagram. And I'm going to describe the process of um, how uh, the Prisma 2020 R package and Shiny packages, uh, Shiny apps work. So the main function is Prisma flow diagram. And it's based on GraphViz and uses diagram R. In this uh, code, in this language, um, the, I use the term um, nodes for boxes and edges for arrows. And the package automatically connects the boxes with arrows. Um, but for this um, case in Prisma 2020, I use explicit node location. So I explicitly um, say where the boxes should go. Um, and another um, important factor is that the previous and other arms of the Prisma 2020 flow diagram are optional. So if you haven't integrated studies from previous reviews or if you haven't searched other um, sources of information, those arms can be uh, dropped from the resultant flow diagram. It also has a what's called responsive location of the exclusion reasons node. So the box that has exclusion reasons in, where each line is a different exclusion reason, can be uh, varying sizes depending on the number of exclusion reasons. And uh, Prisma flow diagram, uh, the function responsively moves the boxes around depending on how big that box is to a certain degree. So this is the flow diagram again. And on the left, you can see the optional previous studies arm, and on the right, the optional other studies arm. So within the R package, data can be read in from a template CSV file. Here's a screenshot of the CSV file. And the data that can be changed by the user and that is read as different is in this red box. So uh, the other columns are there for um, the user to understand the, which box the information relates to. There's also a template schematic that shows um, for the box column which box is which uh, to make it easier. But um, users can change the box text. They can change the tooltips, which are the um, text that appears when the mouse hovers over a tool when, interactive, um, when the interactive version is used. And the URL is the link that is used uh, when the user clicks on an HTML version if the user specifies interactivity. And then the final column, um, in this case, n, which was k in the original Prisma 2020 flow diagram, is the number of um, studies or number of records at any step. You'll notice for um, two of the boxes, there are um, multiple reasons. So where there are multiple reasons, each reason is separated from its number by a comma and from the next number by a semicolon. Um, and the template shows you how to do that. Uh, it, it won't function if you don't. Um, enter the data in that format. So some of the challenges with this are that the vertical aligned text in these blue boxes is incompatible with GraphViz. So what we needed to do was to append that uh, into the HTML using JavaScript, using um, the package's HTML tools and HTML widgets, and it adds text that is rotated through 90 degrees. Uh, and this is the function, I won't go into detail, but um, the JavaScript in there, it embeds that JavaScript into the HTML after it's been produced. Um, I also mentioned interactivity. Um, there's a function SRflow interactive, and it turns um, a static Prisma flow diagram into an interactive one. Why is interactivity important? Well, it helps to support full transparency in that it allows you to see the fate of each record. Normal flow diagrams show the number of total records going through each step, but they don't show the fate of every single record. And uh, full transparency allows you to see what happens to each record by examining a list of records at each step. It also facilitates data reuse and digital transparency. And it makes 
particularly online communication, very simple by um, explaining methods in as much detail as the user wants to see. So the user can click on a box and either see the methods or the data, depending on what you want them to see. Uh, and the interactivity, again, uses JavaScript by appending um, uh, a href links into node elements. And those links, as I said before, are specified in the data entry. Um, and tool tips are provided so that when the mouse goes over, um, a bit more information pops up. So there's two levels of interactivity, information provided in the tooltips and then information provided in whichever source you link to. There's also a Shiny app, as I mentioned. Um, the uh, beta testing version is up, um, but it's likely to change over time. You can see that on the left, um, you can specify which arm is included. And uh, down below, you can enter the text um, as well for uh, the values of n. At the moment, this is all you can change. You can just change the n numbers in the Shiny version. So some future developments are to add in the side panels. You'll notice uh, there that the blue side panels aren't working um, because uh, Shiny doesn't support JavaScript. I also want to build interactivity in so that you can click on the nodes and be sent to um, URLs. Um, we're also trying to build in flexible data entry so that in Shiny, you can either upload a CSV from the template or you can have manual data entry. And to integrate the flow diagram with review management tools so that this data automatically is populated from whichever review management tool you use. Thanks very much.